Hey everyone, I'm Scott from Studio 3T and welcome to the first of a series of videos that I want to make on how to help you get the most out of your license with Studio 3T. Today's video, we're going to take a look at three of our querying tools. So the Visual Query Builder, which is a drag and drop query builder. It's great for MongoDB experts and beginners alike. We'll also take a look at the SQL Query tool, which is a perfect tool to help you transition from SQL into the world of MongoDB. And then finally, we'll take a look at our aggregation editor, where we can fine tune our aggregations and really get the most performance out of it. Now, like I say, this is a series of videos, so we're also planning on releasing one that will help us look at the schema of our collections and how to change the schema within Studio 3T. We'll also look at how to migrate data in and out of MongoDB. We'll also have a video that previews our upcoming features. So we have some team sharing features, which we're super excited about. That will allow you to share queries and share connections with your team and in future iterations, share tasks and other things as well. And we're also working on some performance workbench stuff as well, which we're really excited about. But yeah, for today, we'll look at querying. And if you have any ideas or requests for other videos that you'd like to see, then yeah, just chuck them down in the comments. That'd be great. And yeah, as always, if you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, and that way you can keep up to date with all of these helpful tips and tricks videos that we'll be creating. So yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm already connected here to my local and um, to an atlas here. Uh, you'll notice that they're color coded, which is a really helpful tool within Studio 3T. We don't have a limit on the number of connections that we can use. So color coding them just helps me stay orientated to where I am. You can do that just by right clicking and coming down and choosing the color. So I want to work with this Berlin database today, but I want to work with it down in my local. So a really popular and powerful feature is the copy paste functionality. So we can copy this Berlin database, select the target, and just paste it down there. So it should just take a few seconds. And this will carry across all of the collections, the views, the buckets, and indexes as well. So if you're looking for a quick way to make a backup of something, or if you want to create a test environment, then yeah, super simple to do that. So I'll open up my collections folder, and we'll work with customers 2K++ today. So we can see here that I have my data in the table view, but we also offer tree view as well as the JSON view as well. And you'll notice as well, I have some color coding applied here as well. Now this is the data types that are color coded and I've also applied the type icons to them as well. And you can turn those on and off just down here from this gear icon. It's a really helpful tool if you're new to the data set or new to MongoDB, as knowing the data type will be really important when it comes to writing these queries. Now up here, we have a query bar where we can type in the query, and we also have some options as well to load and save our queries. Now these tools will be really important once team sharing is out, as this will be the way to access it. We also have a query history and a default query as well. So if you find yourself running the same query every day, then you can set that as a default and it'll save you loading it or typing it out each day. Okay, let's look at the Visual Query Builder then. What we do is we just simply drag our fields and select from the dropdown of operators. So I'm going to step into this address object and grab a state. So let's go for Texas. Come back up to the root level and let's grab transactions. So let's say we want 35 transactions or more. And from this drop down here, we have all of the operators that we have. So equal to or more. You do have the option to project down here. And we can also sort. So let's sort this by registration date. Descending. And you'll see here that as we drag and drop the fields, the query's been populated for us up here in the query bar. Once we're happy with this, we can hit run. We'll get some results, we can count those documents. Let's hide the query bar so we can inspect these documents a little bit easier. 
We can use these arrows up here. We can even jump to the last page of results, which I know is a really popular feature just to see the newest documents. Now from here, now that we have some results, we have a couple of, a couple of options. We can make some inline edits. So we can change this up to 55. We can change the names if we want. But if you find that we need to do some bulk edits, then that's also super simple. We can just right click on the field edit the type and then from this drop down here we have a couple of options but we'll select all documents matching the query criteria set that value we'll get a couple of confirmation windows and now we can see here that that's all been changed to false another option we have now that we've written a query with some results is we can translate that query so here we have our query code tab and we support five driver code languages. So anywhere that you can write a query in Studio 3C, including our shell, you'll also have this query code option. And you'll also have an explain plan as well, which is a visualization of the mongo.explain command. If we return back to the query, query builder, the visual query builder is capable of also working with arrays, which we know can be sometimes quite daunting for people who are new to MongoDB. So using it with the visual query builder is also super simple. So let's take a quick look at that. So first of all, we'll have to add in a new stage. So let's go for has array elements matching. And when we select this, it will be asked to select the array we want. And I'm gonna go for the scores array. And there's two elements in this array, products and scores. So first of all, I want products, sorry, products that are TV. And I want a score that is eight or higher. Now this is where, again, the color coding is important. I know that if I hit run now, we're not gonna get any results, but if I change this back to an integer, there we go, we'll get some results. We can double check that this is all working correctly. All with TV, all with eight or higher. And so now we can also come into here with the branch of the match all. And here we can add in some additional criteria. So state equals Texas, etc. So yeah, working with arrays with the Visual Query Builder is also super simple. Uh, I've made a second video on that, which is somewhere on our YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll have it, a link to that floating around the video somewhere now. So if you do want to have a look at that in more detail, then you're of course welcome to go and do that. But for now, we'll move on from the Visual Query Builder and we'll take a look at our second querying tool, which is the SQL Query tool. Now, like I say, this is a great tool for people who are coming from a SQL background, as you can use your existing SQL skills to query a MongoDB. Now, I have no existing SQL skills, so I'm going to use our load and save functionality and load up a saved query to save you guys having to watch me painfully type out a SQL statement. But if you are doing it manually, um, we do have smart auto completion here. We do have syntax header highlighting. So it is really simple to, to write your SQL statements here. We also have some yeah, formatting buttons down here at the bottom as well. So if we hit run, we'll get our results down here in that familiar view where you have them in the table view. The view is there. You can translate it. So here's the SQL statement. Here's a query code tab. Let's have that explain plan. Again, hitting the light bulb will bring out execution stats as well. So if you have indexes that are being used, you'll see those there. You can see how many documents are going through each stage. And the nice thing with the query code tab is you'll see here that these two icons are highlighted. This is our version of the shell and also the aggregation tool. Now we do support the majority of, or do translate, I should say, the majority of SQL operators, including joins. But if you do want to obviously get the most performance out of your queries, then yeah, they should be written in MongoDB. So what you can do is you can translate them or do the bulk of the work in SQL, translate them into Mongo, and then take them to one of our other tools to do that final, yeah, that final tweak, those final performance changes.
And with that, we'll move on to our third and final querying tool for this video, which was the aggregation tool. So I need to select a collection. And once again, let's load up a query. And what the aggregation tool allows us to do is view the input and output of each stage of the aggregation, make sure that it's working properly, inspect all of the data that's coming in and out of each stage. We can change stages around and yeah, really get a handle on what's happening. So here we have a summary. It's only a three stage one, so it's not particularly big. And down here we have those results with 49 results. So if we step into stage one, here we can see the input, which will just be the entire collection without anything done to it. And here we can see the output. So we now have triple the documents and we see here that we have underscore IDs are being repeated. And that makes sense because what we're doing is we're unwinding the interest array. We're taking it from its horizontal structure and putting it vertically because we want to do some counting later on. But what we can do is we can expand the output. Come along and like I say, we can expect these root results. We can step through various stages. We can search if there's a particular thing that we're looking for as well. We can decide how many results per tab we want to see, etc. We can also make it taller as well. So yeah, it's a really great tool for expect for inspecting each stage. A group two, the or stage two, I should say, sorry, it was a group operator. The input of stage two will be the output of stage one. And again, we can count those documents, we can check execution times. So we now have fewer documents, which makes sense because we're starting to group. Group three, we won't go through the motions, but yeah, you see the input, the output, you can make sure everything's working as expected. Here you have the query code option once again. So if you need to translate this into say C sharp, once you're happy with the results, you can do that. We have the explain plan here again. And these include and pipeline buttons here that are on each stage. This is how we would comment in and out. So if you want to try two or three versions of an operator or see how the query performs without a particular stage, then all you have to do is toggle that, rerun the query and see how things go. We can use these arrows up here to rearrange the stages. So obviously the order that each operator comes in will have an impact on performance. We can duplicate stages, so yeah, if you're looking to make little tweaks, remove a stage. And we also have, if we select a dollar lookup, which is the repo version of a join, the MongoDB version of a join, I should say, we also give you some kind of guidance on what you should type, where to get this operator to work. So the MongoDB aggregation framework is super powerful, and if you are new to it, then this tool is definitely a great way to start getting your head around it. And if you are already very familiar with it, then you'll find it super fast and super simple to work with. So I recommend you check it out. And yeah, I think that's everything for today's video. If you are on a basic license with Studio 3T, you will have access to the Visual Query Builder and the aggregation tool. If you're on Pro or Ultimate, you'll have access to everything that we've looked at today. And yeah, if you'd like a trial of Studio 3T, then head to our website, we'll have the details below and you can download a 30 day free trial. And yeah, if you have any feedback for us, let us know. If you have any questions or videos that you'd like us to make, also please let us know. Thanks very much and yeah, happy querying.